That's a big one. In, in, in the context of Notts County's history, how big is this this weekend? Biggest, bigger game as they've ever had, probably. Um, and you try not to think about it like that because that's never going to help you. You know, you're going to go out and try and win a game of football, prepare a team the best way to go out with a pressurised situation that's not totally in your hands. Um, and, and that's what we've got to do. You've got to see it as we need to try and win a game of football. If you, you know, if you think about the history of Notts County and, and everything, and you put that all onto the game, it, it's going to make it a lot, lot tougher. How do you take the pressure off the players? Have you just been ignoring all of that in the week building up to it, or have you spoken to the players about it? No, we did that last week. We 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 had a good long chat last week about you know because the the game at home there was a possibility it could be done and dusted then. So we talked about how we looked forward to that game and it, we're excited by it, the challenge of it rather than sort of dread what might happen and you know looking at the positives rather than focusing on the, the, the fear factor and the same will go again today, you know we've got, uh, sorry on Saturday we've got a game of football to win, um, obviously we know the importance, we don't need to discuss that um, and we just go and we don't have any regrets and we give it everything we've got and if it's good enough then great you know and if the worst did come to the worst, it won't be because of Saturday's game, and that's the key thing. You know, it's, it's Saturday's performance or Saturday's result won't be the reason if if it doesn't go right. Is there actually, bizarrely, amongst all of this, quite a bit of pride for you in how the players have responded? That they're still in with a shout, maybe at this stage, and, and that you know, the, the win last weekend, for example, the results you put in, the performances you put in, that have still kept you in touch. Yeah, uh, obviously, you know, I, I beat myself up. I don't need anyone else to. To beat myself, to beat me up, I, um, <clears throat> you know, I wanted to get it all done and dusted and get us out of the the mess we was in. Um, but there was a lot more issues and and so on and so forth. And you know, it's ended up being a, a a struggle from from the moment I come in. But but you know, certainly since we did the January window, we've we've had a, a you know a big upturn in in results, performances, points per game, whatever you want to call it. You know, we've clawed back a nine point deficit. We've taken it to the last game of the season. But realistically, at that point, we needed playoff form almost to to, to make sure we was uh, we was totally safe and out it, which is which is hard. And um, we've got ourselves to this position, and who knows? What's the mood amongst the players? What do you sense from them? What I wanted, which is excited, um, <clears throat> we've kept training really, really intense and fun. Um, we haven't overly focused on the game. You know, we will do that. We will we'll do that tomorrow. But sometimes you can. You know, if you if you egg the game up too early and you do too much work too early at this level with players, sometimes they they've had an overload of information before you've even got there. And um, <clears throat> you know, certainly with the previous games that I've had, Wimbledon at home to Fleetwood last game to stay up, and and the Wembley game to get promoted, them games, you know, we did one day match prep, focused on the game the day before, kept it fresh in their minds, didn't overdo it, and uh, they were positive results. So hopefully, third time lucky. Will you be monitoring what's going on at Macclesfield? I think I don't think I'll need to. I think the fans might let us know um, as the game's going on. But initially, I think certainly for the first forty-five minutes to sixty minutes, I, I think it's important to focus on our game and try and get us in a winning position. <clears throat> um, and then, obviously, you may ask the question further down the line: How's the other game going? But it's hard because you know you you want to keep keep your focus on your team because that's all you can control. They've had an issue this week with their wages not being paid. Do you think that might affect them in any way? No, I don't I don't think it will be a negative. I think um, they've come this far. They've worked themselves from a difficult situation to get to this point. Um, I think they'll just go out and they'll see it as an opportunity to, to finish off a season and, and most of them will, I'm sure, do it. With, with pride anyway, regardless of the of the issues. You need Cambridge to do your favour. Have you got any message for them? <laughs> I, I think I've said it before. This league, the integrity in our league, I think is is is, is incredible, second to none. You know, I made a comment when we played um, when we played Fleetwood in the last game of the season at Wimbledon. We needed to win. We were two one up with ten minutes, five minutes to go, and Graham Alexander threw two centre halves up front and and everyone come up for a corner and they had nothing to play for. They were a mid-table team and I kind of looked round at the bench and said, are you sure, you know? Um, but they were trying to win a game of football and hopefully Cambridge will do the same and I'm sure Swindon will do the same and that's the integrity of the league. And I understand that 
you try not to look at the at the bigger picture, which is completely understandable. You can't affect it, but you know you know this football club. If Notts were to be relegated, how damaging would it be? Um, I think it would it would hurt emotionally. It would certainly hurt the fans. You know, they've got something they're very very proud of, the oldest league club, um, and and it would hurt the fans. I'm sure um, they've had some. Rocky times. I think I looked at something like uh, 12 out of the last 16 years. They've they've been in difficult situations, and eventually, if you're not getting the stability and the structure right, you know you, you run the risk. Um, but but I think emotionally it will it will hurt them um, initially. But as always, the saying you know, good things can come out of adversity eventually, and um, you know perhaps with new ownership, new structure, you know this can be a club that. That certainly grows going forward, regardless of of from what what base. Does that hearten you? Does it hearten the players? I know it heartens the supporters that these the potential new buyers <coughs> of this football club have said they'll buy it, whatever division it's in. All right, it's a different price, but they'll buy yeah. it whatever. Yeah, I think a lot of people now in football. You know, I think the last few owners this club's have have been sort of local businessmen who have had the the you know it's been been a little bit of a local thing i think nowadays a lot more people are buying football clubs for different reasons and they, they run them as a business and they run them uh, uh with with financial stability <clears throat> put a bit more structure in place and i think you know the base of this club what's here it's had a tough season um and and you know a lot of good people have come and gone and left the club etc but i think if the structure's put in place if people run it properly and run it as a business and, and give the right budget and give it a chance to grow. Um, any football club can achieve great things with good people in, in the right seats, so, so to speak, driving it forward. Any club can achieve anything. Do you want to be a part of that next season, whatever happens? I want to be a part of this club, for sure. Um, obviously, from my own point of view, um, Saturday's my, my first goal to get over. And after that, you know, I, there's new owners potentially coming in, so it's it's pointless. Even I, they might not want me. They they might not have a plan in action that, that that means I can take it forward. No one really knows, and I think it, you know it'll probably take two or three weeks after the season for any of that to 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 be to be known to to myself, to the new owners, to anyone. So I'm I'm just a very small piece in this, trying to hold the ship together and get a group of players to to go out and achieve something incredible on the last day. Um, as always, I always say football clubs, are, football fans are the heartbeat of every football club and they're the only ones that matter. Well said that, man. Thank you. I'm going to ask a lot of similar questions, <coughs> but I've got to do radio, so I might as well do it at the end rather than take up everybody's time. Oh, you now. do that, well, if you want. Well, I'm going to jump in there. Yeah, yeah. Just call me. All right, then. Thank you very much. If you don't <coughs> mind. Well said, well said mate. Well. Steve, have you got any you want to jump in? No, I'm fine. That's great. And they are going to be similar. <laughs> Come on, haven't you got any uh, originality? <laughs> very little. You know me. Do you want this film in, Charlie? No, you don't need to. Uh, Neil, can you talk us through the mood in the camp at the moment? Um, excited. Uh, that's what we tried to do last week. That's what we've tried to keep it this week. You know, we've had fun. We've been intense in training. We haven't overly gone into detail on the game yet. We'll, we'll focus on that tomorrow. Sometimes you can give an overload to the players too early. And, um, you know, we want them to look forward to the game and what might can be achieved. You know, we're in a position where... There's not much to lose now, and, and that sometimes is a good position to be in, um, so, so we're excited. Or you could say that there's absolutely everything to lose. Of course, of course there's everything to lose for the for the, for the clubs and the fans as far as the, the league status, we understand that. Um, but but sitting here thinking about that and the history is only going to make my job tougher and, and the players' job tougher. We've got to win a game of football, um, and the best way to win a game of football is to look forward to it, play with freedom and have a real go, and that's what I'm trying to create. How do you get that balance right between the players knowing what's at stake but it not becoming overpowering for them? Well, last week was the first test in that, a home game. You know, we, we were desperate to make sure we could take it to the last game of the season. We didn't want to end <clears throat> the season at home with our home fans, you know, in, in a really bad way. Um, so there was a lot of pressure on last week. So we kind of handled it last week and we've got to go and do the same today. So I think last week helped us. We prepared for that scenario last week and it should help us to go in and prepare for it again this week. Does the, the title of being the world's oldest professional football league club mean that all of this weighs a little bit heavier than what it has done for you previously? It, it, it certainly will with me. I'm a... 
you know, 46 year old man who has loved football all his life and knows a lot about football and the history of several clubs. Like I said, when I was a kid, I used to get the Rothmans book of soccer every Christmas and go into detail on the stats and everything. So, you know, I, I know what Notts County is. Um, I know the history of the club and, and, you know, if I can't achieve what I want, I'll be extremely sad that I haven't been able to. So, but if I put that on my shoulders now and I go out and I try and then put that onto the players, it's going to do nobody any good. We've got a game of football to go and fight for. Everyone's desperate to win it, but I want the players to be excited about playing it and looking forward to going and maybe just performing something that could be could be incredible. I understand, obviously, you have to keep that, that front for the players as the leader. You have to keep it for the football club at all times. But is there ever a moment in the day where you just let yourself go home and go, crikey me, what am I in here? Every minute. <laughs> Every minute I sit at home. My manager's job's lonely. And, um, you know, I'm, I haven't got my family with me. I haven't got a, a, a wife to take my mind off things or kids to, to, to shout at, to, to worry about up here with me. So when you do go home, you do have the moments where you sit there and you... You look at the season. You look at what could have been. You look at the, you know, the the last minute exit to goal or the the free one up at Colchester clearance that hits a knee and goes in. And you look at all these little moments that could have made a difference. But from from last June, July, all the way through, that's when the season's decided over 46 games and not them them one moment. So, of course, I do. Absolutely, I do, and I feel every ounce of pressure that this situation should bring. I've still got to turn up here every morning and do whatever I can to lead this group of players into a game. Looking forward to it. Football's supposed to be an enjoyable thing. I wonder, have you managed to enjoy much of your experience as a Knox manager so far? No, that's the honest answer. There's, there's been far too many things going on at this club to be enjoyable. I enjoy going onto a, uh, a training pitch on a Monday morning with a group of players. I love Monday to Friday. I love you know, working with players, whether it's through fitness or their minds or their, you know, their tactics. I love it. And um, then you get to Saturday and you cross your fingers and uh, that bit's a little bit more nerve wracking. Um, and then obviously after games, you have to deal with whatever comes. So there's, this has been a tough gig and there's no, no doubt in that. Um, but um, we're here, we're going into the last game and we've got a, a chance, albeit a slim one, of pulling off something remarkable and so with all that said why on earth would you want to do it for a living <laughs> it's all I've known I played football I did my coaching badges when I was young and uh, finished my pro before I finished playing so I've always been into the coaching side I mean being a football manager is less about developing players and and you know because everything consumes you rather than that side of things it's all about winning games of football um, being a football manager is a no-win situation because you know, I can't tell you guys anything about your jobs or give you an opinion on how to do it, but everyone will on mine, unfortunately. What's going to be key on Saturday <coughs> at Swindon? Um, well, first of all, the obvious from our point of view is that we, we've we got the right mindset. We're not nervous. We don't fear the game um, and we look forward to it and we, we play naturally. And, and if we do that, I thought we did it really well on, on Saturday against Grimsby. If we can do that against a, a good team, we give ourselves a chance. I think that's the first thing. And then, obviously, there's loads of little moments that come with it. We saw it last night with the Barcelona-Liverpool game. Between the boxes, one team was probably better than the other. But in the boxes, the other team was, was clinical and outstanding. And then it will come down to that. But uh, that's down to the players then. Yeah, if you've got Messi in your pocket, now big time. Um... Yeah, now big time to bring him out. You're right. <laughs> um, if, we, if we look at the whole situation of Notts needing to win and Macclesfield really needing to lose. Um, some have said you need a miracle. I wonder if you think it's quite that extreme. I think bookies don't normally get it too wrong. They don't normally give out odds. And I think if you add up the odds of Macclesfield winning and drawing... 7-1. Yeah, there you go. So if you add up the odds of that and, and then you add up the odds of, of us winning our game and you put them together, you'll end up with a, the odds of it happening. And they're not normally too far away. So it, it's not... <clears throat> something that's it's not a miracle and it's 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 an outside chance but any other weekend in 45 games could Notts County win one game at the same time Macclesfield lose one game absolutely it happens all the time so when you look at it like that 
it's it's there's every chance it could. Got any friends at Cambridge? No, <laughs> should have thought about that, shouldn't I? <laughs> uh, as for Macclesfield, they've not been paid uh, this last <coughs> month. Do you think that's going to have any bearing? No, I think they've come this far. They were in a difficult situation themselves earlier in the season, and that they'd fought very hard to get to this point. Um, you know, they'll want to finish it off. Any personal pride will want that to happen. Um, so I, d I don't see that being a, an advantage or a disadvantage. You know, it is what it is. Say the worst were to happen and, and knots were to be relegated. What would it do to you, the players and this football club as a whole? Uh, well, I can't speak for all the players because uh, I don't know what it would do for them. Some may walk away and bury their head in the sand and pretend it was nothing to do with them. Um, others, I know it will hurt. It will it will hurt me. It will certainly hurt me because um, I've had to front the whole thing. Um, so so of course there will be a real pain there. The supporters, um, you know, it will hurt. Of that, I'm I'm really sure. But like I say, supporters love a football club no matter what. And yes, they'll lose a, a title that their history has has brought, you know put in place up until now. Of course. Um, but there's no reason to say that, that in the future this club can't, <clears throat> under new ownership, grow, get stronger and great times could come back, albeit without that title. Thank you, mate. Well done. Neil, if you, if you were to achieve survival on Saturday, how big, gonna, how big would it rank in your career in terms of achievements? <sighs> God. Um, I think I, I didn't think I would better the, the year at Wimbledon when I first took over uh, because I was a rookie out of academy, being an academy manager, and to, to go into that and and achieve it on the last day took every skill that I hadn't even learnt really, just personal skills. Um, but this 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 has been a a different kettle of fish to that. So this has been a lot tougher, both on and off the pitch. So um, it it could top it. It really could. But uh, you know, it's not about my achievements, is it? It's about um, the football club. Do, the, do you sense that the players might think they're on the verge of something quite remarkable if they were given that everybody was writing them off back in January? Um, that's that's what I'm trying to work on with them. That's the bit mm. that I'm trying to get across. So rather than the sense of failure. I'm trying to work on the fact that we've taken it to the last game, and there is a chance we could do something incredible, mm. you know. And and to keep even in their careers, whether you're Michael Doyle at 37 or Sam Stubbs at 22, something remarkable could happen that that you 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 uh, you take with you. I mean, if the worst case happens, I still think you'll learn and be better for it, for the for the situation. And you know, I know that I've been on record loads in the last couple of months, really trying to protect this group of players who come in knowing the situation and have given everything um, so I'll continue to do that with this group. What, what are the in, what's the injury situation like? Um, we've, we've only really got, a, a, we've got through training today fine so there's only one doubt Matt Tootle's not been, been well, he's been off a few days so we're not sure obviously how how we'll be and whether he, he, he's going to be well enough to get in and train tomorrow so so that's the only doubt um, but, but we'll know that tomorrow. Um, sorry if I'm going over. No problem. Um, you said you really want to make this, you want to focus on the emphasis of it being more of an exciting occasion rather than what could be at stake. Just how do you instill that in the players? Um, I think last week was the key key point with that. We, um, <clears throat> you know, I said before we had the kind of elephant in the room meeting that, you know, last week we could have gone down at home, been relegated, not taken it to the last day. And... Um, that would have been obviously awful for everybody, but particularly at home, in front of our home fans, it would have been really tough to take. The atmosphere would have been horrible. Um, so, and I, I wanted to sort of get that out in the open, but then talk about that, be excited about the game because we got a chance of getting out of the bottom two. We got a chance of taking it to the last game of the season, worst case, and we achieved that. So I think that was a big step for me because we can take that experience of how we felt going into last week and how we did look forward to the game and I thought we did perform very well and take it into this game because it's exactly the same situation all over again. Would it be fair to say that you <coughs> felt it was a little bit of a breakthrough almost for both yourself and the players looking at, looking at it like that? I, f I felt that I, <coughs> I am denied after the Crawley game on how best to get prepared for these last two games and you never know, hindsight's always a wonderful thing, but you decide to have a big meeting and, and <clears throat> address an issue. You then watch the reaction and 
you know, now I feel that it was the right thing to do. Um, and really, I haven't had to address it again. We've come in, the boys have been bubbly, they've trained exceptionally well, sharp, lively, fun, smiles on their faces, really looking forward to the challenge of trying to perform on, on, on Saturday, and that's the best way, we, really, we can approach the game. Is there still that sense of belief among the players? Um, yeah, but I think it's a sense of belief without an enormous pressure. Uh, it's quite it's quite a different scenario because you know we've got to go and win a game of football and there's always pressure on winning a game of football but but loads has got to happen still. We know that. So so we can only go out there and take care of our thing. People have written us off. You know, we're we're strong favourites now to be doomed. Um so we've got nothing to lose as far as Saturday's game. Obviously after that we know we know what the situation is for the club. Do you relish the underdog tag? Not in this situation. No, I'd rather it be at a Wembley Cup final. Um, uh, but but um, no, I don't think there's anything. There's nothing pleasant about the pressure of this situation. I faced it at Wimbledon. We needed to win the last game of the season to stay up. There's nothing pleasant about it. You know, people who have supported the club for 40, 50 years. You know, people could lose their jobs because you fall out of the league. There's a number of things that that are on that and there's no 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 pleasantries to embrace there um you just do it the best you can how does it compare to that relegation well, of course there's still one game left this season but yeah how does it compare to that? loads of similarities throughout since i arrived um loads of similarities in different things that have come we had the the knowledge back then that if we won it was in our hands we were safe here we haven't got that knowledge so there's there's a difference there um, and obviously the experience of managing the two teams has been totally different, but uh, we are where we are and it's the last game of the season and um, you know all we can do is is go out fighting. And you say you are focusing <coughs> on the game itself tomorrow with the players. What kind of game are you expecting at Swindon? Um, well, they're a good footballing team. They make the pitch big. Um, played against Ricky's teams last year when he was at Oldham and you know very good young manager and um, you know th they'll cause us problems they've got loads of threats going forward um, which is what I say you know if people expect you to go gung-ho in minute one and be 2 nil down it, it's the wrong decision hindsight's a wonderful thing on knowing how the game's going to go as a manager you try and read them the way they play what they're going to try and where they can hurt you where their strengths are and then you try and work out how you can impose your game on them and create the chances you need to, to score goals so Tomorrow we will, you know, it won't be a long session, but we'll we'll get cover everything. There'll be some video analysis in there. We'll do loads of work on our set plays, um, and who knows what what might be the bit that that wins you the game. It's looking like Knox have taken a hell of a following down. I think more than two thousand tickets have been sold so far. It's incredible, to be honest with you. You know, given the situation we're in. It doesn't surprise me because they've been like it all season. And you know, when you look at the Lincoln games, the Mansfield games, you look at a home game the other day, given the situation we're in. But that's what football fans are all about, football clubs. You know, you support your club no matter what. And they haven't had what they deserve from from the players, from from any of it, from back in June, July, all the way through till now. They haven't got what they deserve as supporters. And they've kept turning up and they've kept going. And... Um, that's all we can expect to the players to do back for them on Saturday. Just funny to me, what would your final message to the fans be? To keep believing. Keep believing until we've got nothing else to believe in on, on, on Saturday evening. We've just got to keep believing that it can happen. Um, keep going. And like I say, whatever happens, this club will have some really, really good times in the future of that, I'm sure. Wish you very well. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, Gaffat, um, you referred to it previously how after the Oval game in January we were written off, no points addressed back then. At that point, you'd have definitely taken it going down to the final day with the chance, wouldn't you? Of course. I'd, I'd rather be a point clear of the relegation with it in our hands, but of course we would have done. Um, you know, part of me got excited the same as the, the fans did probably after we played. Um, Lincoln, Forest Green, and then Mansfield. You know, there was just that, that lift that everyone thought, oh, we could go on a run here and but it's been tough and, and obviously we've got a lot of youngsters in within the group as well and, and we've been dragged back into it and every time we thought we might be able to get out we've been pulled back in and I've always said May the 4th was the only time that really mattered 
um, and we're there, virtually there now. So um, yes, we'd have taken it, but I'd have liked it to have been in our hands.